Добрый день. Hello, and thanks for joining us on our show, The Post-Coronavirus. And today we'd like to talk about the meaning of work in life. I think this is the most current topic nowadays when more than 2 billion people are unemployed. And today we're going to talk about the essence of work itself. And we'll start with a definition from Wikipedia. Work is a conscious, per, a conscious act of man in order to satisfy and fulfill the needs of the individual and society. Freud said that the main goals of a person in life are to love and work. And also Marx says that labor is the exchange of, let's call it, substances or commodities between man and nature. How would you call it? Uh, depends what times are we talking about, but actually labor or work is a basic condition for our existence. If, to look at it from the point of view of nature, if there's no need for labor, then man's not drawn to it and doesn't do anything. And so I'd say that labor is a necessity that forces a person to make some kind of product that's necessary for him. But if there's no, but if it's not necessary, then he doesn't make anything. That's interesting. From the point of view of history, this is how it really was for tens of thousands of years, that labor or work was a necessary basic thing that people needed in order to simply survive. Afterwards, started to exploit each other, each other's labor, and that way to make money. And afterwards, what became interesting is that the essence of work itself changed, meaning people themselves wanted to work. Today, we're in an era where a person completely identifies with his profession, with his work, with who he is. This is who he is. This is status. What do you think? How will work change in the future? I think that things are advancing toward a point where we will be able to provide for our basic needs with um, by very small efforts. Specifically, our basic needs will feel that this is enough and we will not create any surplus because finally we will come to the understanding that by this we're destroying ourselves meaning each and every person personally, the planet that we're living on, society, and therefore we have to limit ourselves in our ability and make only what's necessary. And for that to become what's sufficient. Well, you're teaching Kabbalah for many years, and even though that this show is unrelated to Kabbalah directly, but still, from history, I'd like to ask. There is an uh, expression, by the sweat of your face will you eat bread, meaning what? It is a spiritual component of our work, not a corporeal one. When we're talking about the correction of man's ego, in order to make a social element out of him or it, that will be more in sync with the integral nature that will be the highest goal and purpose, then there we will have to very seriously work on ourselves in order to create um, social elements, correct social elements out of ourselves, and here the, the work's unlimited. This is something that we will have to realize, and this will define the state of man in this new era. So, by the sweat of your face, it's a person's inner work with his ego, not exploiting other people, suppose. Yes, but not only. And what does it mean to eat bread? This is already a result. 
This means it's the quality of bestowal, meaning to receive pleasure. Yes, this is what we have to achieve, and to achieve the quality of bestowal is very not simple. So we're going to get pleasure out of bestowal by bestowing, by feeling that society needs me, that I care for society. All of this is my purpose, my work. So you really have to work on your ego in order to get pleasure out of giving people. Yes, but not in order to get pleasure. Here there are further revelations of the goal. Okay, another expression from the Torah. What does it mean, go and profit off each other? This is exactly what it means. By connecting with one another in the correct, right format, we achieve such a state where we start in our relations, in our connections, in our altruistic relations, the quality of bestowal and mutual love. In it, we start revealing the uppermost layers of creation. So what do you what do you make of live off another person? That together we wish to exist in such a connection that will allow us in our connection to feel the next level, the higher level of nature. Okay, now I want to ask about labor and work. These are two different concepts. Thanks to labor, people build their relationships with one another, and work is a physical concept that can be done by people, machines, animals. Do, do you agree? From my studies of the wisdom of Kabbalah, I divide labor and work into corporeal, corporeality, as I've mentioned before, that we have to dedicate a certain part of our efforts in order for our animal body to be able to exist. And in regard to our spiritual part, we have to come to the understanding of our special mission and task and work of a person in this world where he works on connection, meaning on rising above his ego, developing out of himself, being an egoist and becoming an altruist. And in this connection, revealing a completely new form of life. The purpose of labor is the final result of man's... That's true, corporeally and spiritually. Yeah, it, it could, uh, a person, could, the result of a person's work could be a product, could be many other things. You're saying that building relations between people is also labor. If you can explain what will be the product of such work, a correctly organized society. That's the new product? Yes, the most important product. When we will be connected between us by such agreements that um, will we'll agree that the connection, our connection, is the most important thing for our existence, and in our connection, we will start revealing the higher forces of nature, and our development will be aimed at a more psychological human development. In contemporary society, work is something very essential, but nonetheless, 80% of the people don't like their work. We work for hours to buy things that we don't need in order to impress people that we don't really care about, let's put it that way. And why do we do it? What motivates us? Well, actually, it's our ego that motivates us in general. But you have to see in every specific case what aspect of man's ego is pushing us 
trying to lead us to what? This is, if we're talking about from the point of view of nature, but actually if we're starting to work on ourselves, we have to direct ourselves at an artificial connection between us in order to make out of us a completely integral system. To draw people, there are three methods to draw people to, to work. Um, there's like, um, you know, in the times of slavery, there is also economic needs that you, you have to make a living and voluntary work, meaning maybe a person doesn't even need these, the means or the money, but he does it. And I think that in 1948, there was a law legislated that a person has fall on the hands of society, and society will have to care for him. He won't be thrown to die in the forest or in the woods and to be eaten by animals. He lives in a society. Society will have to care for these kind of people. And if there are many such people, then there are simply parasites, and it's necessary to somehow um, fight with them, deal with them, we're not allowing anyone to control us, so why should uh, these people use the fruits of our labor? So you're in favor of this being this kind of behavior being punished? I'm in favor of every person in society to go constantly to under constantly undergo education until his very last day, and as a result of his education, he himself will be drawn to being a useful element in nature, in society. Now, the UN decided that every person has the right to work and to choose his place of work. Do you think that this is correct, that society? Who, who's supposed to choose what should a person do? A person himself or should society tell a person where to work? Society has to raise a person in such a way so that he will find the place where he could be most beneficial for society and that he will be under the control and influence of society and will act in accordance with society. Main thing, society. Secondary, man. So it's not that man himself chooses or society, but society educates a person in such a way that he himself will understand where he can, where can he realize himself in the best possible way for the sake of society. True. Another question. In your books, in your lectures, you say that a person has to work even if he has the means. He has money. Why? Because um, society needs some kind of work that he can do, uh, whether he's working for money or if he's working in order to give society precisely what he ha can give them. We're not looking at labor as a basic need. We're looking at man's participation in society as a necessary thing or means. Can we say that a person has to work even if he has the means in order to connect with other people? Of course, work is connecting with other people. Work is connection with the general structure of society and so on. He has to do it. And he does it precisely for the sake of that, in order to be a human being, in order to be a part of society, and not in order to make money. Meaning work is a means means of how to become included, integrated in such a uh, 
uh, kind of work. We said that the result of man's work is some kind of product or some kind of service or it could be some kind of information. You know, there are such clips where it shows that until we uh, some kind of product reaches us, it goes to tens of thousands of people. You know, even the coffee, the coffee that we have on our table, you know that much effort was put into this by many, many people. And the question is, they put in it some kind of energy of their own, some kind of effort. Could that connect us to? Is there some kind of... If we understand how we're connected with one another in order to decide how should we exist in the best possible way, then by that we will value each other. Of course, this is something that you have to show everyone and tell about it. What's the difference? What's the difference? People live their life like they did before. I grow whatever I grow in my garden. This is what my family eats. That's that. Maybe we went to the marketplace and we connected with one another. A person can make everything for himself today. And if I look at what's around me, then I see that the whole world is participating in that. Is there a deeper meaning to that? And if so, what? We see that this way it's better for us to uh, provide for ourselves, that we can be better off that way. There are such places in the world where it's best to make something. There are other places where it's better to um, manufacture, where it's... uh, It all depends on the cultivate. It all depends on the conditions of the soil. So this means go and profit off each other, live off each other. Yeah. So the world, I, I can get pleasure out of all the services that exist today that didn't exist before, thanks to this kind of even egoistic kind of connection. Of course. And in the future, will this change somehow? The connection has to change. What will change? It has to be not in order to live off each other, but in order to provide for one another. And these 7 billion people, that they worked only in order to get money, and I mean, meaning they didn't think about me, obviously. They thought about how to earn something for themselves, and I got this product. You're saying that in the future, people's intention, what are they working for, will change. Will I, will I feel it when I'll drink the coffee? It's not about the coffee. First of all, the land can feed not 8 billion, but 20, 30, and 40 billion people, and to feed them well, and to clothe them, and to give everyone a normal place to live, where a person can live and just stand that this is the way that's necessary for him to exist. These are his basic needs and to give him his basic needs for his children and education and everything. Meaning we can provide for everyone, no problem. The entire problem is not to create anything redundant and not to deplete the planet and to work in a way that Everyone will be safe and well off. This is what we have to aspire for. This is what we have to put tremendous efforts into, and especially our inner efforts. Not physical ones, but... And this is where the problem is, because we stumble upon our ego here that is positioning us one against the other and not allowing us to be nice and good to each other, and this is a problem. Here we need education and a general motion in the same direction of becoming an integral system. When people give each other services, then there you can really feel. Through that service, you can feel that person's, the person who's giving that service, his attitude. Now, when we're talking about a product, when I don't see all of these people, will it be possible to feel this or not that much? Well, it depends on our consent. There has to be a clear plan, a clear social consent between us. 
in society. And this kind of general uh, general consent. Well, people agree that everything that they make and do is in order to provide for everyone's basic needs, that everyone will have what they need, and so on. And so we'll have we'll have places or factories or whatever is necessary in order to meet our basic needs. We need all of that. But the main thing will be that we will be engaged in mutual learning and mutual revelation in the correct connections between us, the revelation of the inner forces of nature, and then by revealing its integral system, this revelation will help us, help us ourselves to create an integral system, and then we will be called Adam in Hebrew, also meaning to be similar to nature, also meaning human being. What's the best way or thing to do? To work for myself, for uh, my boss, or for the country? Ever talking about my approach? Yeah, from your point of view. From what I study from the wisdom of Kabbalah, it doesn't matter who are you working for, because both man and society and the government and the entire planet and all of nature all together, it is all one integral system. And we have to be included in this system. We have to tap into this system. At, uh, at first, against our own will, and then willingly. And according to the level, to the extent to which we're integrated in nature, in the system of nature, but it all starts from love of others and up to the point where you reach love for the entire nature and for everyone and everything, the entire integral system. I want to ask about the motivation for work. 80% of the people are motivated by the money, about 40% uh, their ability to develop a career, um, pleasant atmosphere in the company, 36%, and so on. There is such a parable where a person meets someone in the desert and he's uh, pushing this heavy rock and he's asking, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm laboring, I'm suffering here. He meets another person asking him, what are you doing? He's also pushing a rock. He says, I'm earning for my for my family. And the third one that he meets, he says, I'm building a temple. So the idea is that the, that people have a different motivation. That's clear. In your opinion, what is the highest, what, what's the highest motivation that a person can have? Or how would you motivate your workers? Only through education, by education, they have to understand that they are performing the most important work in the world. At every given moment, they're making such efforts that are making the world a better place, elevating the entire world, the entire universe to the next degree of its existence. And there's nothing higher than this work, meaning bring the world to an integral state where every part of the world, every part in the world is interacting with every other part as one whole, and then the world is becoming more and more of a single organism. And the understanding of doing this is simply a necessity Unnecessary, unnecessary incentive for our development. About two billion people in the world are might lose their work and in 2020. More and more people are working from home. 
On the one hand, there are many pluses to this for the worker and for the proprietor. But on the other hand, we stopped wasting time on marginal talks, smoking together, breaks, this, that. But on the other side, it says that precisely in, in on those breaks, the most uh, burning problems were solved and also a person's losing social contact if he works from home. The question is, what do you think? What will replace these ties that a person had at work? I'm very happy that these ties are abrupted, that the connection between people, that people are distancing from one another because all of these connections were egoistic. They were built and based on the lack of correct education. And therefore, it's good that that's how it is. And uh, while working at home, um, you know, working per hour is a problem. You don't need to work per hour. You don't need that. We have to make it so that a person will work 24-7 from the bottom of his heart, that uh, everything will be a part of it, his leisure time and his attitude toward the family and uh, walking the park and doing sports, that this will all be a part of his life. Why look at your clock? And today, the labor that people make that's, you know, really worthless. So, should people be paid for the work or for the amount of hours that they work? The payment has to be such that will meet a person's basic needs in order for him to live a good and normal life regardless of what is he doing, where is he working, what kind of work is he doing. The pay should be equal for all, at least according to the individual needs of every person. But who could say what that is? For this, we have to study people and to build certain graphs and graphs and researches. Oh, this is social work, and many people will be engaged in this, and we'll create such charts, each of us, about what's needed for us, necessary. Now I'm giving you a task. Put together a chart of what do you need for a day, for a week, for a month, for a year. And this is what you'll be engaged in, not all the time, but it's simply something that you know, this is a report that you have to give, and from these reports we'll understand what do we need, what does each of us need, and we will learn what's necessary, what's enough, what's what's surplus, that there's no point in making creating, manufacturing, because we deplete the planet by it. How in an ideal society should uh, work be paid for? Uh, it's supposed to be according to your efforts, but a person's efforts are hidden from the eye. So how should ways it's supposed to be or how? Well, it should consist out of two parts. More or more parts, but at least two parts. Corporeal material and social spiritual. So the corporeal material part is something that we can calculate how we're supposed to pay a person. This is more or less clear to us. We see how many children he has, um, the conditions that he needs in order to live a normal life, and the different climate zones of the world. These are all things that we can more or less calculate, and they're more or less clear to us. And here we have to cling to the general criteria that it's no more and no more and no less, that it will be in balance with integral nature. And the next level is already a spiritual reward, psychological one. There, everything depends on a person's investment, his efforts, his examples to the benefit of society. This is something that we have to study and solve. But it's not uh, a material stimuli or form. Therefore, here it's uh, still very hard to talk about this.
Still, a person that takes upon himself the responsibility, he is uh, responsible for the lives of thousands of people. He has to be paid the same as his worker who is responsible for just one little action. Why not? If he has all of his basic needs, why does he need more? What is he going to do with it? He'll see that he doesn't need it. Okay. Blitz, short questions, short answers, personal ones. What's important for you in your work? That I will see my students advancing and understanding the structure and purpose of life in the world. What's your favorite work? Favorite work? Uh, my work is teaching. Educating, spiritually educating. What reasons awaken you to work more effectively? Only my students. And the general purpose of our existence. What plus or minuses are there in your work? Plus and minuses. Mm, I wouldn't say that it's uh, that there are such specific. Uh, it's it's work day in day out for many many years through different forms of media where you write talk. You have different meetings, gatherings, congresses, and so on. It's all work. It doesn't matter what form. The main thing is that it should give some kind of result that people that participate in all of this will advance spiritually and will value this kind of opportunity. Who or what can force you stop to stop working? Well, if it's not uh, by force, then I think only death itself. In your opinion, what's the most effective motivation for a worker? The feeling that he is needed, that what he's doing is necessary. And uh, so on the one hand, there is pressure to do the work, and uh, labor makes the man, or work makes the man, do you agree? Work for the sake of a higher goal, this is what makes a man, um, a person who he is, a man or a human being. What habits would you like to acquire to become better? What kind of work are you ashamed of? I don't think that there is any kind of work, if it is to the benefit of society, that it could be shameful or that a person should be ashamed of. Why? When a little child is, um, you know, you have to clean him, you have to take care of him, and what? We're ashamed of this kind of work? No. When an ill person that needs help is among us, then we were, do we, are we disregardful to it? No. If the work is to the benefit of society or to the benefit of someone, there is nothing shameful about it. Or Last question. Did you recently do some kind of work that you can be proud of? I think that the fact that we have organized, well, it's actually not me, but my students, but that we have organized this kind of virtual teaching first under the attack of the coronavirus and the system in which we're all now interconnected and that we study together 
I think that it's something to be proud of. And maybe last thing, uh, what can you advise youth, especially in the post-coronavirus era, what kind of professions will remain? Where should we put in the efforts? Um, From the point of view of the coronavirus, I think that anything that in the future will be anything that will be necessary for society because that's the most important thing. Every person wants to know what will society need in order to realize yourself correctly in your work, have the right habits, education. So there's nothing more important to society than to get the correct kind of education and to become that person who can correctly educate others, meaning the work that is directed at the consolidation of all members of society and making society a correctly integrated system, that's the most important thing, and these people will always be very necessary. I'd advise especially the youth at any age to acquire this ability. It is a profession that's necessary for everyone in particular, even if you don't work specifically in that, but in order to correctly participate, integrate in society and for everyone else. Thank you very much for your interesting answers. Goodbye for now. And until we meet again. We talked about the meaning of work in our life, and our next meeting will be about the economics of consumption.